Hey guys and welcome to this video on the C programming language. So in this video we're going to do another practice problem. We're basically going to try to find the smallest positive integer value that cannot be represented as sum of any subset of a given array. And so I'll show you guys exactly what that means. Let's go ahead and get started for now with a few comments. So first I want to give this program a title and it's going to be exactly what I said. We want to find the smallest positive integer value that cannot be repre oh I misspelled cannot cannot um, be represented as a sum of any subset of a given array all right and I'm just going to press enter here so we can see it all on the screen at one time perfect so now let me explain the problem so basically we're going to be given a sorted array and the array is going to be sorted in non decreasing order okay uh, so that means that the elements can all be the same or greater all right and it's going to be a sorted array of positive numbers. So of positive numbers. We want to find the smallest positive uh, integer value that cannot be represented as a sum of the elements of any subset of a given set okay and we are expected to do this in big O of n time so that basically just means and it's not always true but it basically means that we have to do this in one for loop okay so let's give a few examples so I say example one here we're given some input array so it'd be an array and it'll have the numbers maybe 1 3 6 uh, 10 11 and 15 okay our expected output would be the number 2 because the number 2 is the smallest positive integer value that, that cannot be represented as a sum of these elements in the array okay so maybe I do an explanation here as well okay so what what integer values can we get from this array here by summing up uh, the numbers so we could get one we can get three we can get six we can get ten we can get eleven we can get fifteen okay well that's obvious because they're all there but now what subsets can we get by adding these numbers together so we could get one plus three which is four we can get um, one plus three plus six which is ten we already have a ten so I don't need to write it again um, we can get one plus six which is seven we can get 10 plus 11 plus 15 which is 36 and we can get uh, 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 which is 20 and so on and so forth okay so let's give another example make sure that we are understanding the problem that we want to solve so we're going to input an array something like 1 one 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 now this array is still sorted in non decreasing order all the values are the same all right so what would our output be well our output here would be the um, number six no the number one two three four it would be the number five all right and 
why is that? Why is it five? Uh, let's see here. Explanation. So we can add, well, we get one. We can have uh, any of these elements as one. We can get two by adding two, any two of them together. We can get three by adding any three of them together, and we can get four by adding any four of them together, or all four of them together. Now the next smallest positive integer value that cannot be represented using this set would be the number five. All right, maybe another example, and I'll probably do one more after this one. So let's see, we get our input array, and it's something like, one, one, three, four. And I keep misspelling output up here apparently. Okay, so output. Uh, what's the smallest uh, integer value that cannot be represented by this array? And that would be the number, let's see, two, five, nine, uh, two, three, four, five, six, we can get six, uh, we can get seven, we can get eight, we can, yeah, we can get nine. So the smallest integer value is 10. And right now what I'm basically doing is going through all the possible combinations or yeah, all the, the, the possible um, subset sums that this array can create. And we could do that in two for loops, but we can't do that in one for loop, not that way. Okay, so explanation here, we can get one from the one, we can get two by adding the one and the two, we can get three from the three, we get four from the four, we can get five from adding the one and the four, we can get six by adding both of the ones and the two, I'm sorry, both of the ones and the four, um, we can get seven by adding the three and the four, we can get eight by adding a one, a three, and a four. We can get nine by adding every single element in the array, but we cannot get the integer value 10 from this array. Okay, and last but not least, this is a important example. And we're basically given an array like this. So all it contains is the element two and what is our expected output? Um, you may think that is actually two, but no. The smallest possible uh, integer value that cannot be represented by this array is the number one. All right, and I can explain this, but I don't think it really needs an explanation. Um, the smallest positive integer value is one, all right? So let's go ahead and get started on this problem now. Get coding. So let's set up our um, let's set up our, our our main our main function and our library and the syntax. All right. So right now I'm just creating our library, or I'm not creating. I'm including our library. Now I'm creating our main function and return some integer value. I'm going to return zero. And this is just setting up our program. So now I want a function that's going to return the smallest positive integer value. And it needs to return an integer. So it's going to return an int. And I'm going to call it small int. And now small int needs to take in an array. And we need to know the size of that array. So it's going to take in the array and the size of the array. All right. Now I'm just going to copy this here. And this is where we're going to actually work on our function. And because right now it requires that I return an integer value, I'm just going to return the value 0. And I'm going to run our program to see if um, everything's syntactically correct and see if it compiles. All right, so let's give it some time here. All right, look like it's doing something, and yes, we're here. So it looked like it compiled with no errors, which is nice. All right, 
So now we have to start thinking about how to code this. So we're going to be given again some integer array. I'm going to call it R. And it have values like 1, 3, 6, 10, 11, and 15. All right, and then we need to know the size of the array. So I'm just gonna create an integer variable called size. And the size of the above array is six. We have six elements, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and of course, this is from our example up here. So the expected output is two. All right, so let's go to our well, let's actually, let's create another variable. And let's just call it output, maybe. And output will be equal to our function, small int. And it's going to take in the array, and it's going to take in the size. Okay, and that's going to be our output. And then we're going to print this to our console. So I'm going to say percent D and then we're going to use output here and then that should give us our smallest uh, value so maybe I say sm smallest value equals percent D okay so of course percent D we're getting that from our variable output and as a matter of fact let's go ahead and run this right now small int the function is going to return zero so all this is going to return zero so our output is going to be equal to zero so the smallest value equals zero so let's run this and see if we get zero and we do up here it says smallest value equals zero it may be hard for you guys to see uh, depending on how you have your screens and what type of screens you have but uh, it basically says smallest value equals zero as expected. Now, of course, the smallest positive value cannot be zero. It's going to be one. So um, let's start our creating our function just like that. So I'm going to call the smallest value the sum. Okay, and the sum is going to be one. So this is going to be the smallest value that we can return. So I'm going to return sum in our function here. Let's run it. And right now we're going to get yes, yeah, smallest value equals one. So that's still not the answer that we want. We want the answer to be two. We want the output to be two. All right. But we know that the smallest integer value, a possible integer value, is one. Now, um, I also said that uh, we want to do this in a for loop, right? So we're going to need a variable to loop through. So I'm going to create our variable i. And let's go ahead and create our for loop. We need i to run from zero because we're going to use i to uh, we're going to use i as an index for our array. So i is going to be less than the size of the array, and then i is going to increment by one each time. All right. And now within this array, um, the reason why I chose sum is because we're basically going to have to sum up the elements in the array and kind of compare them to the next element to see if it's uh, to see if sum is greater than or equal to uh, that next element. Okay, so that was a lot. But uh, now all we're going to need is an if statement here. We're going to check to see if the element at position i, so that could be uh, element at position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it could be um, the element 1, the element 3, the element 6. All depends on whatever the value i is. So we're going to loop through all of those elements. And we're going to check to see if that element is less than or equal to the sum. All right. If it is less than or equal to the sum, then we can, we can add that element um, to our sum. And if it's not then every other element behind it will not be um, less than or equal to sum as well. So uh, sum will never increase. Okay? So if the array at position i is less than or equal to sum, 
then we can add to sum. So sum is going to equal sum plus the array at that. Uh, I'm sorry, the element at array position i. And again, if if this element, uh, if this element is greater than sum, then we won't be adding any more of the elements to our sum. Okay, we can just stop there. We're done, and we found the smallest positive integer value. All right. And so let's go ahead and give this a run. All right, so now we see that we get the smallest value equals two. So let's uh, copy uh, this array here. And let's see if we get the output five like we expect. So I'm gonna put all those elements there. And now the size has changed uh, to four. Maybe I should make this more dynamic, but uh, let's go ahead and run this. And so now we get the smallest value equals five, which is exactly what we expected from our output. So um, this is one solution to this problem. I have another solution as well that I might put up here. And um, hopefully you guys understood the problem and hopefully understood how I solved it. Uh, please leave any questions you have and comments. Don't forget to subscribe because now uh, YouTube requires you to have a specific amount of subscribers um, for the new policies and uh, leave any likes and share if you think this video was very helpful. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. And I also have this code on my GitHub and the description link below if you guys want to check it out for yourselves. All right, guys, see you all next time.